Welcome to Beacon Church, a light to our neighborhood, a beacon set on a hill. We aim to be a beacon of God's good news in Answorth and wherever he places us to live and work. We are here to demonstrate to others the good news of Jesus Christ, to restore life, rebuild community, and build up the body of the church in love so that all are actively involved in the task. Go, be fruitful, and multiply. In the building, and for those online, a warm welcome to you all. We welcome any visitors that we may have this morning in the building. Okay, so today um, we will be, Tim will be speaking, and he will be speaking on Colossians 3, 9 to 17. And it says, as the body of Christ, how will we close ourselves? And I don't believe that it means the question relates to our fashion sense, our daily fashion sense. I think it's, it's going to go a little bit deeper than that, I think. Um, is it going to be with compassion, kindness, humility, and love? So think about how we are demonstrating ourselves, who he is in ourselves today. So... The world has a very, a way of getting us down. It's filled us with distraction, temptation, and entertainment, promising us happiness, but never fully delivering. Perhaps you have felt the weight down, weight down when looking at the state of the world, overwhelmed by the corruption and confusion that surrounds us. Even the day-to-day -day responsibilities that we are given can feel burdensome. When we focus on these earthly things, our eyes slip from the things above. We forget the blessings and promise we have thought that we have through our ad adoption as sons and daughters of Jesus, and our satisfaction in Christ slips away as well. Yet, it doesn't have to be this way. Colossians 3 explore what it means to set your mind on things above, enabling us to experience the true joy that the Father wants to lavish on us. Furthermore, when we set our eyes on him, we are better able to serve him. And service is ultimately the duty and pleasure of every believers. So this morning we come with open hearts to hear from the Father this morning. He died, he rose, and he began to prepare that place for us that we may have that everlasting life. So what we're asked to do on a day-to-day -day basis, it's, it's nothing compared to what he has done for us. So this morning, I hope that each and one of us that are here this morning will leave that door this afternoon, hearing, feeling, knowing that they've had, heard, had a word from God this morning. So, we will continue with the service. I'm going to open in prayer. So, if you can all join with me in prayer this morning. Thank you. So, Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, God, that we can gather as your children this morning. We thank you that you have given us this day... Father God, and we will worship you 
and rejoice, Father God, for all the things that you have done for us. Father, we ask that you continue to open our minds, open our spiritual ears, Father God, open our hearts to understand. Give us that wisdom, the knowledge and understanding to be able to work in your, as a body of this church, it work in the community, work with our neighbours. Father God, how we are going to treat people, how we, we do things, our thought process, Father God, to think before we speak, Lord. Father God, we, we, we need help. We, we cannot do this on our own. And so, Father God, we, we ask that for all the things that we do, that's not of you, Lord. We ask you to forgive us, Father God. Give us a, a, a touch, Father God. Show us and point us in the right direction, Father. Lord, we thank you and we praise your holy name this morning. We lift you up, Father God, and we give you praise, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you will continue to do in our lives. Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so this morning, um, communion. We have communion. So for those at home, um, if you haven't already, you can prepare your bread and wine. Um, communion for later on. Um, we have the AGM at 12.30. Um, again, those online, I believe that uh, link was sent out for those to join in. That if you are not able to be in the building. Okay, so we're going to welcome the worship team this morning. So I think they've got three songs that they, four, oh, four songs. Uh, Hallelujah, the Lord God Almighty reigns. <coughs> welcome in this place. I will worship. Well, I've got three. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got four. So okay. thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, family. Have you come to worship this morning? Amen, amen. I just want to um, read a scripture first uh, before we go into our first song, which is welcome into this place. Amen. The scripture is Isaiah 61. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prisons, those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who moaned, to console those who moan in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Amen. Amen. This morning, we've come to glorify the Lord. We've we all have the anointing. Some of us have it, and some of us don't. But we all can have the anointing. Will you receive the anointing this morning as you worship? Will you be open to receive what God can give you? Let us stand in worship as we sing this first one, as we usher in the, the Holy Spirit into our lives, yes? Come into this place. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we live. 
as we lift our hearts, as we offer up this praise unto your name. Can we hold it right there? Can we hold it right there? This is a time for you to worship. This is a time for you to come before your God and give him everything. You may never see tomorrow. We have right now. We know the words. Some of us don't need to look at the words because we know the words. My memory is not all that good, so I need to look at the words. But we know the words. Let us surrender ourselves before him as we sing this song again. Amen. Here we go. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide. In the praises of your people, so we lift our hands, as we lift our hearts, as we offer up this praise unto your name. from him this morning. Welcome. Receive with open hearts. All he wants is your worship. Give him your worship this morning. Let us lift our hands. As we lift our hearts. As we offer up this praise unto your name. One more time. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your so we lift our hands as we lift, as we lift our hands again, as we lift our hands, as we lift our, as we lift our hands, as we lift our hands, as we lift one more time, as we lift, as we lift our hands, as we lift. As we offer up this praise unto your name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that this is the moment, oh God, we can come to you and just surrender before you, Lord God. We ask, oh God, that you will take on board, oh God, the goodness that we give back, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you will bless your people, oh God. Your spirit, oh God, that you have given us. Let us worship you in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you. Amen. Amen. As we continue to worship, the song says, I will worship. Now, I know we haven't got many men, 
not many men, no. <laughs> but we have one side which we can call A and the other side which we can do B. So this side, I'd like you to sing with me. I will worship. And the other side, I'd like you to echo. Now, I know you all have a voice, so let's sing. Amen? Amen? Amen, amen, oh, amen, amen. amen. I will worship I will worship with all of my heart with all of my heart I will praise you I will praise you with all of my strength with all my strength I will seek you Everybody. I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. You alone I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. I will bow down. You 
Amen. We are going to glorify God this morning. I don't know what you've come to do, but I've come to praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, amen. Let us worship. Let us worship him. Let us praise our God. The songwriters put down, Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the IS. It's not put that song because there is the heaviness. It's put that song because there is a joy, joy in his spirit. We are welcoming, welcoming Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what they did when he rode to Jerusalem. They sang Hosanna. It wasn't Hosanna. It was Hosanna. Let's worship this morning. Amen. Hosanna, Hosanna. You can clap, you can wave your flags, you can dance. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the high.
Hallelujah. We worship our God this morning. Amen. We worship him. That's what you've come to do, to worship him. Amen. Communion, please. Okay, we'll invite Chris up for communion. Thank you. Morning. Uh, before we start, has everyone got one of these? Yes. If you want to open the first bit now, but it says all the noise and everything later. But some people find it difficult, but just grab the clear bit and pull it open. And try not to accidentally open the other one yet, like I've just done. Right, often you hear when you're taking communion, someone say, if you've got sin in your life, if there's anything wrong in your life, let it pass by. This isn't actually the case. This is not what Paul's talking about when he says, if anyone... Don't drink it unworthily. If you couldn't take communion, if you had sin in your life, you wouldn't be able to take it. Because Romans chapter 3, verse 10 says there's not one righteous, not one. What Paul's talking about is unity within the church. In the first century, especially in Greek culture, Hellenistic culture, which was throughout Judea and Asia Minor, there was a very big thing about social gatherings, social parties. And they'd invite their friends and people who thought was of some kind of importance along. And this mentality went on into the church, to the communion. And they would feed their friends more, the host would, whoever's house the church was being held in, or people they thought was important. So you'd get people being drunk on wine, especially in Corinth anyway, because they were a rum lot. <laughs> and then you'd have people eating scraps, not seen as, imp as important. But this is an insult to the unity of the body of Christ. Because everybody in Christ is equal. If we don't treat us as equal in the church, the way we act, the way we are to each other, reflects how we, how we see each other, reflects how God sees us. And it also reflects on how people see us outside the church. Because to some people, we are the only image of Christ they will see. So if we're to be a light in the community, we need to be in unity yes. as a body. Colossians and Ephesians, books like that, put a lot of emphasis on the body. So if, if you have got anything against anyone in the church, not necessarily got a sin in your life, but something against someone that you can't resolve, let it pass by. But if you can, resolve it at the next opportunity. Right. And then he... He took the bread and says, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So if you'd like to get your cracker, I will eat together. Father God, I want to thank you for the work you did on the cross, Lord. No greater thing has a man done to lay his life down for his friends, Lord, and you call us friends. There is no difference between black, white, Asian. Everyone is equal, rich or poor. You consider us all the same, Lord. I want to thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. So now if you want to grab the silver bit and open that. And then he said, and in the same manner, 
he took, took the cup, and this is a new covenant of my blood. Do this of, as, and think of, in remembrance of me. So let's drink. It, it's not just a question of unity. By doing that, there was undermining the significance of this. The key word is remembrance. We do this in remembrance of what he's done for us. When we take these, they represent Christ. Some churches believe that they are actually the body and blood of Christ, like the Catholics and that, but it, it represents him. And like the stone pile of stones at the Jordan River, people would touch it and they would remember that their ancestors, the Passover, they'd remember what their ancestors went, went through when they're taking the leavened bread and that through the desert and the parting of the sea. But this isn't just about remembrance of the past. It's not just something that's covered by the dust of centuries gone by. This is about the future. When we, stand, when we take this, we stand at the foot of the cross. We don't just share in his death, but we share in our future resurrection, yes. the resurrection of Christ. Yes. And we need to remember that. And, we need, and that's the two key things we need to do remember is unity and Christ. That's what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for that. Um, as I said this morning, as the body of Christ, how will we close ourselves? So during... Tim's going to come and speak um, at Colossians 3, 9 to, 9 to 17. And the question is still, how are we demonstrating who Christ is? And if we've not thought about that this is something that we're going to think about today what's the plan what are we going to do how are we going to demonstrate Chris says who Christ is okay so I'll welcome Tim need your help. Um, I just need to do something before we start. Before I start. You can help me to put this on. Oh, okay. Because um, it's kind of, yeah, very big. So that's it. That's lovely. Oops. I just caught on it. There you go. There, I just wanted to, uh, to put that on before we start, and I'll explain a little bit more about where it came from, why I'm wearing it. It's not some official robe, um, but it's something else. So let's just pray before we, we read together Colossians 3 and 9 to 17. Just still your heart, whether you're here in the building or at home. Just be still for a moment. Lord, we come to you because we know your word changes hearts, that you change who we are, that you are in the business of making us like you, like Jesus. And, but Lord, we need that, that cleansing of our hearts and minds as we come to your word. Lord, will you transform our inner person? Transform our thinking. Let our minds be renewed through the reading of your word. Let us be free to receive all that you want to say to us today. That it may make a difference to who we are, not just here, but in our everyday situations. Lord, we need you so much. We want to glorify you with our lives. But speak to us today that your word will be powerful, that your word would be life-changing that you would be honoured and glorified through what is said and done, but through what change you are able to make in us today by your Spirit. Now come, Lord Jesus, we want to honour your word 
and receive your word and feed on your word today. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's, uh, let's read together. Um, and hopefully we're going to have this on the screen so that we can read it. Read it together. There we go. So this is just taking up a bit of what we heard last time when Java spoke to us and beginning with verse 9 of Colossians 3. Having been told, your mind should not be set on earthly things anymore because you are a new creation. Basically, you died, your sinful nature died with Christ on the cross and you've been raised with him. So now set your minds on things that are above. Start thinking. It's really important to think about how we live our lives now. Not seeing things as we used to, but seeing things through Christ and through his eyes. So if we go back to verse 9, please. Thank you. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices. And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge of, in the image of its creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and he is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Verse 14. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. As members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you as you teach, richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Thank you. Well, um, yeah, before we start, let me just explain the reason for this um, dara that I'm wearing today. Um, I was given this on a visit to a family on holiday um, in North Africa. Uh, when we went round for tea. And by that I don't mean um, um, quiche and scones and cakes. I mean a cup of tea. Three cups of tea, one after the other, which is the way that it's done there. And um, then after an hour or two, this family said, would you like to come to a party? I thought, that sounds good. Yeah, we're all getting together over somewhere else in town. Would you like to come to a party? And so I said, okay, all right then. Well, but, you know, what, what we're thinking, what do we dress in? And they gave us clothes to wear. Now, there's such a lovely family. They gave me this to wear at the family party. I said I could take it away with me. And uh, Edwina, Edwina was given uh, a malafa to wrap around, around her head and around her shoulders. Um, and so we went to the party. And, um, and all the men sat around our low cushions and around the table in this very large room, about 20, 25 men upstairs. And all the women sat downstairs um, and uh, we ate separately. And uh, the party went on for several more hours. Um, I think it was just actually a family gathering. We didn't know to start with whether it was a wedding or what. They were so hospitable, so kind, um, left me with this to wear. But they gave me this because they didn't want me just to go in my normal clothes because I was there on holiday, I was in holiday clothes, and um, they didn't want me to come to the party like that. That wouldn't have been right, would it? It would not have been the right etiquette. 
And it very much reminds me of the parable Jesus told. Do you remember the parable Jesus told about the guy who went to a wedding, a wedding party, wedding celebration, and he managed to get in without wearing a wedding suit? Well, look, you're looking at the sort of thing. Well, this is only a simple one. Um, there are lots more smart, smarter things than this. But that was, the, that was what he should have been wearing, his wedding suit. He should have come in properly dressed. And in the end, Jesus said, the, the master came to him and said, the bridegroom came to him, you can't, you can't come in here. Kick him out. And so he couldn't stay. And it was a kind of picture that Jesus gave us about what um, the, the, the day of judgment will be like, what the kingdom of heaven will be like when God comes, when Jesus comes again. Will we be ready? We'll be clothed in our robes of righteousness. We'll be, will we be forgiven? Will we be cleansed by his blood so that we can go into heaven? Or will we not have on those robes of righteousness that we don't deserve, but he gives us when we trust in him? So I'm wearing this just as a symbol today of what the Lord is saying to us about living out his values Java helped to bring out the meaning of the previous uh, verses when she last spoke. And um, as believers, we have to make a decision daily to put off. So Java was doing the put-offs last time. We're doing the put-ons this morning, all right? So you had the put-offs or put-ons. I hope it didn't put you off. No, okay. Right, and it's not going to be too much of a put-on this morning. We're going to be putting on. That's what he says, to, to live for Jesus, to be known as his disciples, to live in a community of Christians who are believers and who are part of the body, there are things we need to do. And it's our responsibility to do them. It's not you just got your ticket, you're along for the ride, and everything's okay. You can behave as you like. We've got to be very careful about how we behave. We've got to put off, we've got to take off things that are no longer part of our life in Christ. And that's what Java was explaining last time. But those types of behavior that don't belong in the church of God. And don't belong in the life of believers. Today we turn to what we need to put on instead of those things. A daily decision to put off what is wrong, the old ways that we left behind, and to put on the things of Jesus Christ, the attitudes of heaven. Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to do that? Because that's your task each day. We're quite willing to take off our old clothes at the end of the day that need washing and then put new clothes on the next day. And we have a daily task as Christians, as believers, to do a similar sort of thing. And that's what all this teaching is about. How you dress is important, isn't it? It can be important. It can be a way of identifying clearly with people who believe certain things. It's not always that, that way with Christianity. Like a particular genre of music, I had a friend who was a punk rocker, um, stand us next to one another, and you would have seen quite a contrast. <laughs> he, he, had, um, yeah, he had all his many more piercings than people have today, and he had his hair in a lovely, um, a lovely I don't know what colours it was, but it was certainly a very spiky arrangement. And he had, his, he had on his clothes, which he never seemed to change anyway, and those great big boots. Um, and... Yeah, he put on the persona of the clothes that he wore. And so generally, he wasn't particularly friendly. But what you wear can help people to see what you do and who you are. And in Paul's time, people were really used to this picture of what you wear. The clothes, the picture of putting on clothes, is a picture of what we do with our attitude of mind. What will you put on? What will your behaviour be like? What will your words be like? What will your beliefs about the world be? See, it might be comfortable, it might be familiar to slip into your jacket of gossip and slander. Oh yes, I'm back in that place again. Well, hey, have you heard about so-and-so? It might be comfortable or familiar to do that or to pull on those boots of rage and anger and to stomp around shouting for a few minutes about things that you don't like about her. Or him, or them. But God's word, Jesus' word to you says, no, you're a new creation. Your sinful nature was crucified with him on the cross. 
buried in the tomb. And as a new creation, you have the power to behave differently. And Java helped us to see that this challenge is especially, what this word is saying here, and what Chris said this morning, is about how we behave in the body of Christ towards one another. It's especially about that Paul is turning at this point from general behavior to what you do with one another. So don't lie to one another. You see, he's turned to that, and then he's beginning to talk about what we do and how we behave in the church and towards one another. And that's a real challenge. There's no room for behavior that frightens, that bullies, that intimidates, that, that lies in the church. Your job's to take all that off and to put on the new clothes. We often say that it's the heart that matters when you come to church, um, and not what you wear. Well, yeah, that's true. There is probably a limit to that one. Um, but we try not to judge you by what you wear, because we want to judge with those new eyes of Jesus Christ, and new eyes of our salvation, spiritual eyes. I want you to imagine changing jobs. Let's say somebody has got a job as a police constable and they're all dressed up every day in their uniform and they change jobs so they become a nurse. Now, if they keep on their old uniform, they'd be in trouble to start with, but if they kept on their old uniform when they walked into a hospital ward, what would people think? How would people feel? How do you feel if somebody in a police uniform walks into your place of work, your house, your street walks past you? How do you feel? What's your, what are your thoughts? If there's something wrong. Something's wrong. Well, I've done something wrong. Yeah. 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 So you're worried about, well, what have I done? Have they, got, um, have they come to talk to me about something that's happened that I didn't realise I'd done? Uh, so there's an anxiety there, isn't there? If somebody walked into a hospital ward wearing a police uniform, you'd think, what's going on? <gasps> Are they coming to talk to me? Are they coming to talk to uh, one of the members of staff? <gasps> you know, if they come up to your bed, you'd be like, oh, heart's beating away, and going, oh, what have I done? What have I done? Is it coming to bring me bad news about someone else in my family who's, who's been killed in a road accident or something like that? Because you know what that uniform signifies. Well, people know what your behaviour signifies. People know, people can see. They can see what you're dressed in. So, people of God, it's time we put on the new uniform. It's time we learn to put it on every day. And especially with one another. Because if we can't do it here, how are we ever going to do it anywhere else? We can't do it here where we love one another, don't we? Where we have something so much in common. Where we are, most of us, a new creation. Living in Christ. And how are we ever going to do that in the workplace, in our community, where there's so many pressures to really conform to what everybody else is like? Start here. What does a new wardrobe look like? What should we be pulling off those hangers and shelves each day and putting on, especially when we're interacting with each other? What well, some very simple things here? which I'd uh, like to, to look at. So this first thing we have in um, verses 9 and 10, the message puts it like this, the message translation puts it like this. Don't lie to one another. You're done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes you've stripped off and put in the fire. Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it. All the old fashions are now old, all the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized and uncouth, slave and free mean nothing. Nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ and everyone is included in Christ. Is that how you see everybody in the body of Christ? Is that how you see one another? To be people who speak the truth, people of integrity, people who need, can take off the garment of saying whatever we think will make people like us and begin speaking honestly. 
put on the garment of truthfulness with one another. And these verses tell us to take off the prejudice, the discrimination that might be in our hearts, because if anyone's in Christ, she or he are our sister or brother, and equally a royal child of the King of Kings. Christ is all and is in all believers. So we've got to get rid of all hesitancy to mix with, to trust, to spend time with people who are different to us in race, in background, in language, in colour, whatever it is, and instead put on that willingness to grow together, to work together, to love one another and explore the diversity of our character and the gifts and the experience of God that we offer to one another in the church, in the kingdom. So that's the first thing, put on truth. Put on truth, transparency, equality. And then we've got a list of things. So um, in verse 12 to 14, he says, clothe yourself as, as, as children. Those who are chosen, God's chosen, holy, dearly loved children. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Okay, what a lot of things. You can probably remember this verse. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. It's a lot of things, isn't it? A lot of things to remember. They're all called virtues here. And they take a lot of practice. And we know that. But when you're going out tomorrow, or when you're coming out to church, maybe you could just recite this verse in your head. So, clothe yourselves. If you really are chosen and much loved, God's elect people, then clothe yourself with compassion. Try to see what the other people around you are feeling and thinking. Think about their best interests. Think about what they've been through. Take an interest in them. And exercise kindness to one another. Humility, gentleness, patience. So hard, but that's a very short list, slightly shorter than the fruit of the Spirit, isn't it? So you can remember that one. And he says, over all these virtues, put on love. So love defines all those things, doesn't it? They all come from love. Again, I did like what the message said uh, in trying to transpose this into everyday language. So, chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you, compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even-tempered, Content with second place. Don't like that one, do we? That's humility. Be content with second place. It's all right when you say humility. But once you start saying, be content with second place, it's another way of saying, yes, I'm going to put myself below someone else and not demand that I have all my rights and all the things that I want above them. I'm going to let them go first. We don't like to hear that because we're told all the time, put yourself first. Make sure you put yourself first. No. Be content with second place, quick to forgive an offence. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. So clothe yourselves. Don't lie. Clothe yourselves. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, is the next thing that he says, isn't it? This is the other thing we need, the peace of Christ. But there's a context here. There's something he's trying to say. The aim of this piece of clothing is to bring unity in the body. He says, because as members of one body, you were called to peace. So when he's saying, let the peace of Christ reign in your hearts, what's he he saying? He's saying in your relationships with one another, strive for that unity, strive for that peace between one another, rather than letting offence be a kind of bait that baits you into argument or thinking badly of somebody. Let the peace of Christ rule, reign in your hearts. 
promote peace, not disagreement, not discord, not getting into little groups or parties to argue with one another. Because this is something that people in our community will pick up on straight away. Anyone coming into church is going to see that. Instead, they need to see you letting the peace of Christ reign and rule. And finally, he says that we should clothe ourselves with the message, the word of Christ. So what he actually says is, let the message of Christ, verse 16, dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. So again, let the message, the word of Christ, dwell in you richly is not talking about just in your life outside of church, but in what we do together. We've got lots of wisdom, haven't we? Lots of wise people, lots of folks who've been around a bit longer and have got so much we can learn from them. And yet, whatever wisdom we share with one another, let it be based on the word of God. Whatever we speak to one another, we might think we've got something wise because we've done some research into some particular self-help um, philosophy. But that's not the word of Christ. That's not the word of God. That's not the message that he's got for us. What he says in his word will bring life, true life. And so that's the other thing that we need to put on. That attitude that says, I'm going to encourage you with something from the word. I have a friend who rings me up occasionally or sends me a message and all he'll say is, I want you to pray and I want you to tell me or give me the first scripture that God puts in your mind for me. And I'm like, oh, 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 palpitations, I can't do this. Lord, Lord, you're going to speak to me right now. And, but more often than not, yes, he does. And all I do is listen to whatever the first scripture the Lord puts in my head. And I give it to him. And yes, most times, it's what the Lord is saying to him. And it's encouragement to him. We need to learn to be more like that, anointed by the Spirit, so that we can listen to the word when we're in our conversations with one another. I'm not sure whether I would be happy if, if somebody came up to me after the service and started singing a psalm to me um, out of the blue. Uh, but we, when we sing together, in some senses, you might be listening to what other people are singing. And you can do that if you want to. And listen to the words that they're singing. Listen to um, what God is saying through his word, through them. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. So when we're together and when we're apart, whatever we do should reflect Jesus. If you can't do it in his name, don't do it. Yeah? It's the old thing of what would Jesus do, isn't it? But if you can't do it in his name, that's all it means, then don't do it. But if you're going to do it in his name, do it with all your might, with all your power. Do it in excellence, whatever it is that he's set you to do. Because you're doing it in the name of Jesus. And see, all those things are clothing you in, in robes that show people who you are, that you are a child of God, that you are chosen and much loved, that you have something that they're looking for. All those things. But will you put them on? Will you put them on? People of God in Beacon Church, have you taken off your old self? with its practices and put on the new self? Are you doing that day by day? This is the proving ground for born-again believers to perfect Christ-like character. This is where you do it. This is where you practice it so that you can take that out into the world as well. How seriously do you take this calling? Is it a choice that you're willing to make every day? to be transparent with one another, no hidden agendas, no false fronts, to clothe yourself with Christ's character, to submit to pursuing his peace between one another, to disciple one another with God's word. Let's pray together. I just want you to pause for a moment. Has the Holy Spirit been speaking to you this morning? speaking to you about anyone, anyone at all in, in, in the fellowship who 
you have something niggling you in your head, something against them or they have something against you, things are not right, offer it up to him now, offer it up to Jesus because he's here. Oh Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. I put it on one side. It's you forgave me so graciously, so I let go. I give up to you my anger, my hurt, my feelings. You know them. Thank you that in spite of all that I've done to you, Lord, you have been gracious to me and forgiven me. So I am forgiving today. Lord, we want to put off daily all the things that are not of you and we want to put on your integrity, your compassion, your kindness, your humility, your patience, your forbearance, your love. Let your peace reign in our hearts and in the heart of this body, pray, Lord, and teach us to dress in these new clothes. Let your word dwell richly in us. Remind us of these things day by day by day. Lord, this week, help us to see a transformation as we dress in the new wardrobe, as we put on the new clothes, as we think about acting in compassion and love, to hold on to your peace as we search your word for what you give us to live out and to change and transform us. Help us, Lord, to see a difference that others may see in us you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for speaking this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I think... We go straight to Veronica. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. Veronica, come and give us the notices. I know that we want to keep it quite short this morning. <laughs> Trying to say something to you. <laughs> Not you. I'm thinking about me. Bless you. Good morning, everybody. Well, it's good afternoon now. Welcome to you all. Welcome to our time together, our family time together. It's good to see you all. Uh, if we have any visitors, I'm looking around and I don't see anybody who's here for the first time. Yeah, everybody looks familiar. But welcome. So, yeah, today um, is our AGM meeting at 12.30. So you've got a little bit of time to talk afterwards and then we plan to start our AGM at 12.30 sharp. Okay, thank you. Next one. So food bank... Last week I looked and, yeah, I could see lots of people had bought some stuff. Even today some people have bought some stuff. So please continue to bring um, an extra tin, an extra packet that you can put in the box at the back and we can share with the people at Food Bank. Next one. Okay, so the Beacon Centre planning application is in. Um, if you have a look outside, I don't know if you noticed, there's a poster just out uh, there to the left on the on the wall there, and there may be a few others. Um, so yeah, things are slowly moving on. Please continue to pray that we know the, that Beacon knows the favor of God in terms of our application that's gone in. Prayer is still needed uh, for our Beacon family. Some people still not with us. Um, Sister Sue, Elaine, Barbara for her mom, our sister Yvonne. Um, who are still not very well, still having treatment, please continue to pray for them. And we want to remember our sister Anne-Marie, who lost one of her aunts this week, her auntie Wendy um, passed on. So again, remember sister Anne-Marie and family as they go through this process one more time. Yeah, please bear them up in prayer. Next one. Next week, Sunday, uh, Stacia will be leading, um, continuing our series in Colossians about Jesus changes every relationship. Wow, that's a good one for you, Stacia. Just right up your street, isn't it? Relationships, yes. And there's also um, 
a dedication, a baby's dedication, um, next week in, in the service. It is family service. And if you remember, last week, Tim said that um, in family services, we're going to have the offering, the basket will be passed around. So remember that for next week um, as you come. Following our service today, um, it started last week, Pastor Raj, who's been with us, they will be having a time called Sunday Worship, Word, Prayer and Healing, and that starts at 1.30, and uh, that's for um, some of our Asian uh, family whose English perhaps is not as good as ours, and, you know, they can have something a bit more um, fo focused for them. So Pastor Raj and family are leading on that here in the building, starting at 1.30 today. And then normally on Friday, the first Friday in the month, we have our um, day of prayer and fasting. Well, this Friday, there'll be no day of, well, you can pray and fast, actually, but there'll be no prayer meeting in the church because the following week, starting Monday, the 4th to the 8th, we'll be having our week of prayer. So that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, at 7.30 each evening, we'll be meeting to pray about Beacon and what's going on here, um, our community. The theme is actually living in his presence, and we're going to be using the Psalms to help us to, to focus on that and to think about what does that actually mean, living in God's presence? How does that affect us? How does that change our lives? So that will be Monday the 4th to the 8th of July. So I just want to say by, end, well, I just want to end by saying well done to all our students who've completed their GCSEs and their A-levels. Can we give them a clap? It's been a hard <laughs> slog for them. Well, well done to you all, and we hoped to hear success in August, okay? They've got a long summer ahead of them. I think the prayer from the parents is that they'll get a job. Yes, they'll find something to do. There won't be any lazing around in beds all throughout the summer. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, welcome again to you online. If anybody wants to get in touch, these are our details. Anything that you didn't understand in the word today or you want a question um, or you want prayer, please get in touch. Please contact us and uh, somebody will get back to you. Anyway, after AGM... Have a lovely afternoon and God bless you all and see you all soon. Thank you.